Ladies and gentlemen, it's Ali, Jafarian, front row dad, legend, incredible father, husband, and just an all around great dude. Um, did does some other stuff professionally, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. In fact, Ali built what we call the vault in the front row dads, which is the member area custom built for our members where they have their profiles. And we've got all the events, the maps, just everything that a member could want the recordings from past calls and all the goodies. And uh, Ali is loved by all in the group. And we decided to have a chat today to talk about taking space, stepping away from the norm so that we can create a new normal when we return. Ali, buddy, I'm looking forward to this, man. Welcome back to the Front Row Dads podcast. Thank you. Thanks, brother. Always honored to be here. I'm even, I feel as we're, we're dropping into this, um, some nervousness, which is just a little bit of healthy fear because anytime I get to speak about front row dads, especially to connect with you and, and create content like this, there's like this little voice of don't fuck it up, do it right. When in reality, one of the things I've learned from what we're going to talk about is that there is no right, there's no wrong. This is just us stepping into this. So thank you, man, for having me here and for that very, very uh, warm welcome. Dude, that idea of not doing it right for me over the last year in particular has been such a loud voice, this, this realization of, I call it trauma or disempowering beliefs or just being human, right? Mm -hmm. Like wanting to fit into the tribe, wanting to add value. I mean, there's good heart sometimes behind wanting to do it right. You don't want to waste people's time. You want to talk about the thing that matters most to you and to them and and squandering this opportunity, man, I've felt that nervousness many, many times in my wife, life wanting to deliver. I wonder if that was a, that was a, a Freudian slip there with my wife, you know, that <laughs> not wanting to do it wrong, you know, it's, uh, it's huge. Yeah. Um, was that, did that, I mean, let's begin there for a quick second, man. Was that something that you felt a lot as a kid, like wanting to do it right? Oh, absolutely. That lands, lands so deep, especially as it's in focus for me now, as it was part of my childhood, part of a lot of aspects of life, JV is like this, this attempt or pursuit of perfection. And which I th think ultimately starts to lead into what I've realized can become these unhealthy performances. So when we start to wear the masks and perform in ways to please others, as opposed, and for the external validation, right, which is strong, it's a huge oh, influence as opposed to showing up as our true selves, as opposed to stepping out in the world of, with who we really are, which is hard. And yeah. so I honor you for that. We talked a bit about this on my pack podcast recently, which I'm so grateful for, where I feel like you truly showed up there. Mm. Dude, tell me about, speaking of showing up, you were at the retreat. We just got together in Austin, 50 guys, and two, you know, almost three days of, conversations and exploring fatherhood, marriage, and a bunch of other topics. Um, how was that for you, man? Amazing. Yeah, I'm still I'm still processing that. And it's funny, I got home and this is like my eighth retreat. I'm so blessed to feel part of these experiences where they have evolved. Like the first one, this is amazing experience with all the, this, this, this uncertainty and this fear. And I came out of there almost a whole different father in many ways. Fast forward almost four years now, this was my eighth retreat. And one of the, the fun things that happens post retreat JV is I get home and Gabrielle sort of has this look on her face now, like, so what are you going to share? <laughs> and nice. you know it, this has evolved as well because she's very excited to be like well who you know what did he come back with this time whether it's content or some shifts in in energy and I just paused and smiled and I said I will let you know when I feel some of the things that need to be said and in, for a split second she was a little bit restless like what <laughs> that's what I get now but I even told her I was like the beautiful thing that is happening now 
when I come back from FRD retreats or even some of the online experiences is that there are some things that are here now then I already shared some of those, for example. And then there's some things that we don't even know yet that are just going to come out. They're going to show themselves. And dude, it's like this, it's like this perpetual um, model that keeps giving. Like, I kid you not, there's some things that will just sort of present themselves that literally had like an origin from retreat number three, for example. Yeah. Yeah. So that's part of the, the evolution that's been really, really impactful for me. And awesome to pay attention to. And one of the reasons that I w- we wanted to chat here was because of the idea of taking space, creating space from the family so that we can step back into the family with new tools, new perspectives, new energy. Um, and space is so important on so many different levels in so many different ways. I mean, you know, hours and days and months, we could have conversation around space and all the nuances mm-hmm. behind it. Um, you've done a couple of events with smaller groups of guys this year. You went on a hike, you've, you've been in nature, I should say, with smaller groups, like a handful of guys. Mm -hmm. And I've heard amazing things about that. And I want to talk about that in a minute. You go to these retreats, which are, you know, bigger groups, 50 people. Um, how do you talk to your family? How do you talk to yourself about wanting to take time? Um, you know, justifying stepping away because it's easy for somebody to be like if you want me to be a great dad john don't tell me to leave my family right and go to an event you know like isn't being a great dad showing up at home isn't it being there for my family so how are you how are you internally processing that decision to leave and how are you talking about it with your family what a great question this actually came up in a one-on-one interview at the retreat we just got back from. I'm going to give you a very short answer and then expand upon that. The short answer is two words, absolute presence. Mm -hmm. Meaning when I'm here, can I remember that and maintain it? So when I'm with my kids, am I really with my kids? Yes. Because before retreats, I wasn't, to be clear. I was kind of halfway in, halfway out mind in a million different directions. And still there's, there's moments now where, you know, I have to rein myself in, but generally speaking, when I'm here, I'm here. In fact, I have aspirations to get a new tattoo, be here now on my arm. Yeah. The same concept applies at the retreats. When I'm there, I'm there. In fact, I never get to vote in our polls because I don't have my phone with me when we're in group, big group circles. For Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, it's just the concept of like, if you can be with family, friends, everyone, and really be with them, I feel, I think they feel that. I think the energy exchange the, through fatherhood, being a husband, being a partner, being a, a just an overall human is felt. And that way, when you go, even though I still have guilt to retreat, like that voice hasn't, hasn't uh, totally silenced but I have so much more uh, both optimism and just comfort stepping away, retreating for the reasons that I know I retreat. So not to retreat like, oh, I need a break from them, but okay, this is part of me. This is who I am. I need the space to your point. And I almost inevitably come back with some version upgrade or something, some new inspiration, something to bring back to the family. That's a big thing, I think, too, to expand upon the answer. If you retreat and come back with nothing or come back with less for who you retreated for your family, that's probably a sign of to reevaluate why you're retreating. Can you think of uh, real examples where you stepped away from one of these retreats, you went on one of these outings with the guys, the smaller groups, and you had an epiphany of some type, a breakthrough, a realization, you know, you learned something about yourself or about the world, and then you brought that home. And then the action spoke loudly to where your family noticed it. 100%. I'll give you an example from the very first FRD retreat I went to. I was in a small group and I heard Dan Concetta share how he does not yell at home. And my interest is peaked. And I was like, what? 
<laughs> and I was like, why? And he's like, because my mom yelled and it meant nothing to me. Mm. And in that moment, I was just struck by insight. And so I sat with that, I journaled on it. And I went home very intentional to stop yelling. Um, the impact there rippled immediately. Not only did my wife pay attention or sort of become aware of, wow, you've really removed the authority in your voice as a form of discipline and connection with the kids. But then I also shared that with my bandmates and uh, some of them, including Matt Drinkon, you know, shared, had the same effect. He's like, ooh, this could be powerful for me. So it started rippling out and has drastically changed the, the way that I show up as a parent, like I virtually never yell anymore because of that one moment. Something else that comes to mind because you you uh, asked about the smaller adventures into nature is that those have really, the two examples that happened this year were, were the context is we got away. So we got out of the city. It was just brotherhood with, with other front row dads, smaller groups, and we were less distracted in general, but we were immersed in nature. And coming back from those, it's been twofold. It's been one, huge for me and, and really reigniting my soul and what I think is important, what I want to prioritize. But then my family feels it too, because I'm just inherently more wired to do a hike instead of watching a movie, to be conscious of what we use, what we waste, et cetera, which my wife sparked that initial flame. And just to really amplify our connection with the earth, our connection, like we just watched this documentary, two documentaries actually, one about grounding and the other about this, this epic Pacific Northwest trail, 1200 mile adventure. And like, dude, as excited as I'm getting, Sepia at four years old is literally saying she wants to do a through hike. Yeah. <laughs> like, it doesn't, for me, it doesn't get any better than that. So it's like just retreating and coming back again. If I'm coming back and showing up and being really there, they feel it. Sometimes I don't even have to say anything, you know? Yeah. yeah. No, it's so good. I, it's got me thinking about, gosh, there's so many things that are popping up for me as you talk about this. One of them is how not only do we as men, as fathers, as husbands need to get away right? So that we can have this space to have these, you know, these new thoughts that help us evolve. But we need to be encouraging our families to do the same thing. Like, this isn't just how do we take a break? It's like, how do we give them a break? How do we support, encourage, create the opportunity for our spouses to get away in whatever that looks like for them? It might not look like adventure or hiking or whatever. It might look like something totally different, right? There might be their style, which is different than yours, helping our kids to get away. Um, you and I, prior to hitting record, we were talking about the fact that right now in this moment, you know, Tiger is in Nepal uh, for three weeks with his school, right? Nine kids, three adults, and they're over there for an adventure, mm -hmm. uh, a rite of passage. And I'm reading a book called Homesick and Happy. And it explores the power of extended camps for kids where they're away from mom and dad and they're not connected to home. And they're talking about the transformation that occurs when you have true space, like different than going to an overnight sleepover at a friend's house, which right. can be powerful and can be a first step. But at, at the right age, when it's appropriate for that child to think about the benefit of a extended one, two, three week or more camping type experience, being in nature, being with other guides, of course, places you trust, people you trust, you know, and um, this is one that we, we happen to love and trust the adults and the children and thank goodness for an amazing community that's putting this trip to Nepal together. And then I think about Tatiana and Ocean. Um, they're right now in New York on their way to Serbia, on their way to Moscow, then on their way to Siberia, a long, long travel adventure, mm -hmm. the two of them. And I think about how already I'm reaping the rewards of them being gone. Now, if you would have asked me a couple of hours ago, I would have told you I couldn't wait for them to get out of here. <laughs> 
Now I'm missing them. And I love that absence makes the heart grow fonder. I love that my kids are going to see how other people live in the world. I love how we start to miss our home and our bed and our things and our, and the love and even the noise and the chaos. Like sometimes we need to step away so that we, we crave the chaos a little bit. Again, we're reminded that that's like energy and joy and, and pain, but that's all part of the human experience, right? We don't actually want to live a pain-free life. We might say we do, but deep down inside, I don't think we do. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to all get space. Um, how do you, how do you support your, your, how do you support others, by the way? You know, we can talk, talk about your wife, but maybe that extends beyond that to other people as well. Maybe I know your kids are younger. They're mm -hmm. not doing any extended summer camps yet. No, yeah. But may, maybe for, maybe for your girl, you know, how do you talk about supporting space? Mm. What a great question. Well, the first thing that comes to mind is a, a uh, story and sort of a Jafarian, what would I even call this? It's not a rule. It's a way to create peace in our household. Mm. And it originally <laughs> intended for me needing space, which before I tell this story, I want to honor something that you've mentioned. You have talked previously about Tatiana referencing that space is the sixth love language, mm -hmm. which completely resonates with me. I remember reading that book. I read it with Gabrielle and I was like forcing myself to choose one. I think it was words of affirmation. But then when you said that, I was like, that's mine, mm -hmm. which ties right into what I'm going to share is that one of my ideas, which had to have come from some, some retreat or some byproduct of front row dads was this thing I started calling my time. And I was sort of in the beginning, JV, I was like refereeing tension in the household. Usually it wasn't as much with me, but it's where there was tension with the kids or tension with Gabrielle and them. And I just kind of step in and be like, hey, let's have some my time. I also would use it as a means for me to have some space because as, as we, I was became aware, I was like, this whole being together all the time isn't working for me. And it was my way to communicate, hey, I like some space instead of just walking away. Because previously, I just avoid the situation. Whereas now I wanted to present a different solution that I could communicate and say, hey, it's my time. I need some time. Might just be 15 minutes, but just some time to be with myself. And what happened was really interesting. There was this question early on and like, are we in trouble? And I'm like, no, absolutely not. You are not in trouble. There's not a punishment. It's just a way for me to have some space and then for you to have some space. And the kids are like, oh, cool. And even Gabrielle was like, oh, interesting. And so it became this thing that initially we used. And then when it became beautiful is now the kids use it. So oh, it's, nice. it's sort of this way, you know, to be like, oh, like tensions are rising. Because so I believe that there's, we, there's always an opportunity for us to use our words and our feelings to resolve things. But sometimes tensions are so high in the moment that back to the whole point, space is actually the solution. It's not, hey, let's ask better questions. Right, and let's right. sit down and, and really feel this. It's like, whoa, let's just separate. And of course, with six and four-year-old, most times they come back, they completely forgot what they were even upset about. Yeah. So it's that it's reintroducing this, this timeless concept of that Every now and then, virtually everyone needs space. And I want to I'm going to quickly uh, wrap that idea back to what we were talking about with nature. I was doing some some auditing recently, and I was thinking, like, what animals do what we do where they stay together for so long? There's very few animals in the kingdom that move together and are always together. Generally, at some point, they create space and sometimes they create a lot of space where it's like, get out of the nest. You know how to fly now, peace. Whereas I think there's a, a middle ground for humans. And you even brought this up, tying it back to retreats. I remember at, at a retreat where you giving this nice share around like our ability as humans to uh, expand and then come back together, yeah. almost like the yin, the yang. And I think that is vital for family balance. It is in yeah. our house at least. Yeah, let, let me let me speak to that for a second too, because I think that is uh, that is what creates 
is the the um, in and out together apart. Yep. If you look to creation of life, to literally, if you go drill down and look at sex between humans, mm-hmm. the way the way that that teaches us about life is that right after an orgasm, the moment of potential creation of life, right between these two beings, what both parties want at their after their highest form of pleasure and climax, the most intense emotion, what they want is separation. Totally. And that is a that is a beautiful way to look at all the creativity of life is that you could have some of the best moments ever, but trying to hold on to them, trying to constantly get more, give, and that's like being at home. It's like you're creating great moments at home, or maybe it's like high tension, but there's a lot of learning there too. At the height of all that energy. What's needed oftentimes is a break, is space. And you'll find little micro moments throughout your day or your week where somebody goes to the gym, somebody goes for a walk, somebody creates little micro moments of space. But I think it's important to play with bigger spans of space. Mm -hmm. And of course, there's a limit. You go, well, if three days is good, how about five? And if five is good, how about 50? And you know what? Interestingly, I think some people do benefit from longer periods of space. I mean, both Mm -hmm. my kids and my wife are going to be gone for three weeks that's a pretty, some people that's really uncomfortable. They're like, I couldn't do that. That's mm-hmm. too long. Mm-hmm. Right. And, mm-hmm. and I, that, that there's no right or wrong way. I think that's just part of finding your rhythm, how much space an individual needs. I mean, that could be, that could be complicated and it's, and it might be hard when it's different. You need seven, they need 14 days and you might have to do some negotiation there. You might have to do a little give and take. Yeah. Talk to us, Ali, a little bit about the practical nature of getting together. And let's start with the smaller adventures that you've pieced together. So let's say there's a guy out there and he's like, man, I don't know, man, this, I, I don't have a lot of experience here. I haven't done a lot of these. You know, I haven't, I'm not like a natural gatherer of people and planner of these types of events. So how did you guys get the event on the calendar, pull it off? Who did the planning? Talk us through some of the practical pieces of it. So somebody might be able to take that blueprint and go create an event with some buddies. Totally, man. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to try to, I, I think there's some similarities between the two that took place this year. So both started with a seed. <clears throat> and this is an idea. I, I just read this, this awesome book uh, about creativity and things called big magic. Yep. The idea that she shares, which really landed with me, is that ideas are everywhere. You can, and if you really want to think about them from an energy perspective, they're literally everywhere. They're floating. And you can imagine an idea comes through me and I'm like, eh, that's cool, but no thanks. Or an idea comes through me and I'm like, ooh, I need to voice this. Or an idea comes to me and I'm like, boom, I need to start a whole new business, of, of adventure, etc. We all have a relationship to what ideas do inside of us. And both of these these experiences, somebody had enough energy to voice, to to send that out and to send it to our group and be like, hey, I want to do this. And I found that my relationship in both of those scenarios with that was very much like an intense supporter, like, oh, I want that too. And I think I have ideas or skills to bring to help coordinate this. This was my my role to to, uh, extract high level, like, how I showed up in the, the early stages. And then once you have at least two people that have energy, so someone with the idea and someone who wants to support it, you start to build that momentum. Because one person alone, it's hard. As you, I see you shaking your head, you probably learn very similar things about retreats and events. But you get two people that are on it, and then they start you know, putting more of that energy out. And then you start to collect your group. And we have such an awesome intentional community that – with a lot of shared values and interests that these little micro adventures into nature are not hard to sell in terms of just getting interest, you know? And so enough people raise your hands and the two people, which may turn into three or four, start really organizing something. And with the, we were really fortunate JV to have smaller groups. One was eight ish. The other was five that where we could kind of co-create these and what's so awesome about it, especially the last one where we did, back, you know, the backcountry backpacking to 
Montana, they become co-created just like FRD retreats. So it doesn't, you don't leave that thing. You're like, damn, sure. I'm glad Philip put that thing together. There's definitely some gratitude for Philip planting the seed and putting that idea out there, but it literally is co-created. And you, you, I've walked away from those just feeling like everyone who was there was meant to be there. And it was just exactly as it needed to be. It was perfect. So I think these are some of the, co- the, the underlying yeah. concepts. Dude, I got to tell you, when I was at lunch with Philip, you know, just a couple of days ago, he could not stop talking about this adventure that you guys had. He was so revved up about it, man. And he was like, <laughs> yeah. I, I just remember him saying, okay, so the first part is we had to decide, do we want to go over here and camp where there's like no bears? Or do we want to go over here, like in the middle of grizzly country? Yeah. So we took a vote. And we ended up in grizzly country. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he talked about the guide that you brought in and, mm-hmm. you know, just, and, and he, he, he just had so much energy about that experience where I can only, I can imagine. I mean, I, I heard him, but I also was imagining the depth of the conversation and the mm-hmm. friendship and the brotherhood that was created because of that, that commitment. And here's the thing, right? Do you, do you wrestle with like, I'm just too busy? Do you ever wrestle with, I just have too much shit going on at work or I have too much shit going on at home or I got to clean up the backyard or I got all these tasks. I got all these things. Like when I get all those done, then I'll take a couple of days with my buddies and adventure. Do you, do you wrestle with that personally? Oh, for sure. This is something that I shared where I, I needed some support at the last retreat we just got back from was. I'm in a season of more and more in a lot of ways that are healthy, that uh, opportunities where I can serve. And I'm not, I'm not really at peace with it. I'm, I'm transitioning away and really trying to get to a mindset or just an internal piece of being like, Hey, you had a really restful summer. And I did, I got to travel. I got to explore there was very little being asked of me in that season. And now as fall and when we approach winter, like there's a lot being asked, some of which I've committed to, some of which I've created or co-created. And I think this whole balance of less or more, it's been hard on my journey to, to keep it consistent as opposed to just surrendering and paying attention like, oh, this is a, that we're going on a, an up wave and then it's going to swing back down at some point. And it, it ties into guilt, which is such a common topic for us, right? It's like, can I go? And the little voice in the head starts using the word should, which I'm more versed to these days. Like, should I go? Like wrestling with these ideas. And I think if I had to give some type of explanation to how I formulize these things, it's more or less like, is this a whole body? Yes. Does it align with what's in focus and my values, what I want to bring to the world right now? Because that might change at some point, right? And then there, there's always some conversation around, is this the right time now? And that's where I have to kind of do an internal inventory, especially as it relates to my family. Like, are they in a good place? Have I showed up? Have I been present? Which we talked about earlier. And it's it's funny, right? As it relates to this, right as a, uh, we were supposed to record this a few days ago. And the last day of the retreat, uh, I had a, a quick FaceTime with Everest and he was crying. I could just sense the energy, even through Zoom, like, hey, I miss my dad. And I got emotional too in the moment. So I was like, oh, I need a day or two to just be with him when I land, you know? And it, it was exactly what we both needed. So there's that voice and that feeling of, have I been there? Does that does that resonate with you as well? 100%, man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I think the whole body yes is important. And we talked a lot about that at the retreat of really, mm-hmm. really listening to that inner guidance system. And if you pay attention, there are going to be times when it's not right to leave home. Yeah. There are times when I can think of 10 scenarios where you probably shouldn't leave home, no matter how <laughs> many, how much you sell yourself in the power of a retreat or right. becoming a better dad. I give you 10 scenarios where you shouldn't. Yeah. But I also think that you could use like being a great dad as an excuse. So you could actually hide Mm. behind the label of being a great dad. You're like, well, a great dad's not going to leave his family at home. And then, but that means you just don't want to do the work. 
-hmm. You don't want to go open up. You don't want to be vulnerable. You don't want guys calling you out on your shit. You don't want to have to like not have a great answer in front of all the other men when they ask you what you're doing and expose you for your weaknesses, right? Mm -hmm. And then you're going to hear a great idea and then you're going to you're going to feel like, "Oh, I got a great idea. I should probably implement that." And that might not be easy, but it's it's easy to hide at home too under the banner of I'm just being a great dad. But with all your comforts and your coffee and your warm clothes and your routine and all that stuff, sometimes you got to break that shit to step out and be uncomfortable with other dudes who are attempting to grow as well. So it's interesting to really take inventory and let your body guide you. Because logically, you can sell yourself either way. Logically, yeah. all your beliefs, all your blueprints, that's all showing up. Um, but if you check in with your body and you, really like, what is it? Are you nervous to go, right? Are you, right? Or are you being guided to stay like confidently? Hey, my wife's really sick. My family's dealing with some abnormal things right now and I'm not going to leave home right now. Good, good for you, right? We had a guy who didn't come to the retreat because he was like, my daughter is in like this big championship and I really want to be in there around the guys and I know I'm going to get so much value. And I'm like, dude, you're making the, that feels like to, to me, uh, looking, you know, being your brother and like giving you honest feedback, you're doing the right thing, man. Don't come to the retreat, mm -hmm. stay and do the tournament, you know, with your daughter. That's big, but there always won't be a tournament. You know, there's times to show up. Let's talk about Front Row Dad Live, Ali, because we've got December 2nd through the 4th. We've got a big event. This is our first one that we've opened up to every member of our community and even people that want to be members of our community, but haven't yet joined Front Row Dads officially. They can come to this event. So what would you want to tell your friends? Those people who you don't know, like give them, like, I want to know what would you say unfiltered <laughs> about why to go to this? Yeah. And really like from the bottom of your heart, man, why are, why would somebody want to go? And maybe what are the reasons why they're trying to tell themselves they shouldn't go that we can address right now and have some real talk? Yep. I love that. Hmm. So it's it's interesting because there's a part of me that's so excited for this event, which I plan to be at, even though I just came back from a retreat. And it's a little tight turnaround. It's a tight turnaround, but there's there's this uh I felt that because of the way that you're guiding the community into new territory. I, I want to be a part of this. I want to, and I also really deeply want to bring people to give them this experience. So I've done some soft recruiting, which goes right, right into your question. And, you know, I'm not a, an expert veteran salesman who's going to give all the right words and twist the knife to get people to come, but rather sharing from a place of vulnerability, sharing from a place of experience. And what I would say to people is that you've very likely never experienced an event like this. Um, it's esoteric on many levels, meaning it's for fathers. It's generally for men who are high achieving or entrepreneurial, who so have that personal growth engine underneath the hood. And it's also for men of all walks of life. So that's what's been so interesting to me about FRD retreats. Like I could literally be sitting next to a best-selling author or a dude who, you know, is in a healthy career, but just had his first baby and is, is up against completely different challenges. Regardless, they still map back to the core of fatherhood and how we show up, how we prioritize family. And there's the things that are definitely going to come up for people is intimidation. And I'm just going to share some of what I felt at the, you know, stepping into the first, the first event I was, I was privileged to go to intimidation. I don't belong here. These guys are out of my league. Wrong. Because we are a community of humility and you do belong here if this speaks to you. That's what I would say. The other thing is comfort zone, which I'm a huge advocate that if you feel like something is going to kind of kind of put you in an uncomfortable place, not a place where you feel like you're at danger, but like, oh, there's uncertainty here. 
then that's healthy. Like face that. What's the worst that could happen? You go to an event. I promise you'll get a bunch of hugs. You'll meet a bunch of dudes. You'll inevitably learn at least a few new things and likely make some friends. And so there's this overcoming of uncertainty because that's going to happen no matter what, whether it's a front row dad's retreat or it's some other thing that you've just never experienced. And then it goes back to the whole guilt thing. This is another big internal dialogue that we all feel like, can I leave? I was sharing with you, I have some good friends that have young children and just have that guilt. Like I can't leave right now. And that's exactly why you can leave right now, because you're going to come back with new tools, new presence, new awareness that are going to help you back in these situations. They're going to help you resolve this whole internal dialogue. I can't do that. I don't deserve it. I don't need space when I would argue the opposite to those statements, you know? So it's, it's really this combo. And I just want to emphasize that, especially from my experience, not a sales pitch, that the community is one of the warmest environments I've ever stepped into. I mean, and I've been to different events. I've been to, you know, quote unquote conferences, had that awkwardness where you're there and you're like, fuck, I don't know anybody. What am I going to talk about? And I've had those experiences where I felt very isolated, whereas like literally the moment at the first event I attended, it was like, what's your name? Like, and almost, almost a hug on point as an example of how warm we are in the community. And I got the opportunity to reciprocate that at the last couple of events, like spend some time with brand new members who hadn't been to an event before and really give them that welcome factor, which I think is a huge part of our community. Yeah, <clears throat> man, that's, uh, that's so cool. I love to see that uh, nervousness, mm -hmm. you know, and then stepping into that and then becoming the one who's welcoming other people who are experiencing nerves, mm -hmm. that cycle of life, um, circle of life is really cool to be witness to for you, man. And you really have become somebody that people point to as a leader in this community, a, a true veteran in front row dads now having uh, so many experiences in different ways. Um, really cool, man. When Thank you me. think about what this event could mean to the world. When you think about what this event could mean to the kids, to the wives, to the communities that these men will step back into, talk to us a little bit about a possibility of the future, Ali. Like, where is the hope as a member of Front Row Dads, as a leader in Front Row Dads? We talk about people in this community being investors in a mission, mm -hmm. right? Like, if you are a member of Front Row Dads, you could look at that as like, hey, I pay a membership fee to be in this group and da, da, da. Uh, you know, we encourage people and I think people appreciate, members appreciate this idea of like, I'm an investor. Mm -hmm. I look at this as like, if we all invest into this, both with our attention and our resources or capital, we will eventually be able to grow and expand front row dads to be more inclusive of more people and to create more focus around being family men with businesses. And there are lots of other great communities out there doing similar things. And I tip my hat to them. I love what they're doing. You know, billions of people on this planet. I don't feel any scarcity. <laughs> I just know that whether it, you know, whether you live in this state or that state, you root for this team, that team, you're part of this church, that church, you're part of this tribe, that tribe, whatever it is, right? You, the, the key is to find your people. Mm -hmm. The key is to find your people and then to belong. And I love that idea. You might've heard me say this of like, you don't just fit in here. You belong here. Right. We're not looking for guys to just fit in, but we're saying, look, you belong. If, and, and one of the reasons we talk about our values and our ethos and who we are and family men with businesses, not business men with family, all that is to help people be able to raise their hand and go, wait a minute, that's me. Hmm. So if you want to figure out what your tribe is, where your community is, like listening to you and your vibe, and if they get to know me and they get to go to the website and read all the things that we've clearly defined, this is who we are, you get a sense and you'll probably know when you listen to that whole body, yes, right? You probably know. But going back to the question, Ali, and, and I just wanted to sort of seed this with some context a little bit. Mm -hmm. What is the possible impact, man? And how do you think about that as far as you being an investor in Front Row Dads and 
long-term vision of men uniting and having real conversation, working on themselves. Hmm. The impact to me, if I can clarify that, because I feel like that could be a whole whole podcast episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a light question towards the end, you know. <laughs> it's, it's a light question. Yeah, I mean, humanity, I'm just, I'm global impact. <laughs> 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 totally do seven generations yeah. all the kids of the world you know ali just you know <laughs> see if you could sum that up in 60 seconds for me would you that's it yeah i'm honoring the gravity of that question dude so what what spoke to me as you're asking that is allowing more fathers to become alive yeah this is a part of my story is that in hindsight now i feel like i was asleep prior to front row dads. And it's not a bad thing. It's not a wrong way to be, you know, it, re relieving ourselves of good and bad, right or wrong. I was just asleep. I was floating through. I was complaining about things I now hear other dads complain about that I don't think are worth complaining about. An example, oh, so many, you were so busy, all the kids activities, and you just feel the stress. Like, I just feel the stress. And like, the coach in me wants to be like, who chose that and why? Like, are you guys even connecting at home? Like, you know, but this is the type of awareness I would have never gotten while I was asleep, you know, just floating through, um, being a Netflix, Netflix family, right? Mm. Eat dinner, hit the couch. That was us before front row dads. Now, dude, we have so many different, you know, themed nights and micro mini adventures that we do after we we uh, share a meal together like netflix is the last resort that's like once a week if we just want to find a documentary to entertain ourselves so really coming back to are you alive as a father are you alive as a husband are you alive as a leader all of the pillars that have been designed and ingrained in the community really support living an intentional alive life and that's at least how i feel without be without saying a million other things that would support the, the, the gravity of that question well i love how you took the gravity of that question and maybe brought it back to the most essential ingredient possible mm -hmm. which is becoming fully alive mm -hmm. i remember hearing that howard thurman quote years ago don't ask what the world needs, ask what makes you come alive and go do that because what the world needs are people who have come alive. It's like, I remember hearing that and being like, yes, that is it. That is exactly what I want to experience in my own life. That is why I started Front Row Foundation. That is why I chose to step away from a corporate job, making great income and a lot of stability to go pursue the passion and build the life was so that I could be fully alive. Because the thing that terrified me most was getting to the end and having regret. Mm. And, I, I, you know, look, as a dad, one of my greatest fears is being asleep so much so that I will, my kids will leave home. I will then surround myself with great fathers and go, ah, shit. If I would have known that back then. And here's the thing. It's always going to happen to some degree. You're always going to learn something where you look back and go, ah, if I would have known that, that's part yeah. of life. Right. But there's also like, you can also use that as an excuse to not be a learner. You go, well, it's always going to happen in life where I'm going to look back. So now I'll just coast. Now I'll just be a Netflix family. Now I'll just, no, don't use that as a cop out. That's part of how life goes. But we, we want to step into the unknown. And that's the whole point. You go, well, I don't know what they're going to talk about there at front row dads you go nobody really does <laughs> nobody really does right. that's the magic of it but trust me when i say you're going to get exactly what you need maybe not even what you want but what you need mm -hmm. you know it's like when i was telling the story and i think i shared this on the podcast already about the 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 burning man story where mm. i pulled up to get some hot tamale or tamales <laughs> you know and fresh tamales and I mean, the, the essential story, guys, if you didn't hear this on a on previous podcast, is that it's 11 o'clock at night and I'm biking with a friend it's in the middle of Burning Man. So if you don't know what that is, like 70,000 people, middle of the desert, hungry and going, let's find some food. And people are always giving away food. And it's really, really cool. This one guy's like, you know, fresh tamales. Who wants a tamale? And I was like, yes. And I pull over and I try to get a tamale. And he hands me a little paper cup with a with a candy tamales in it 
<laughs> and a sticker that says, fuck your expectations. Yes, so good. And it was so perfect because what I thought I wanted was food, but what I really needed was somebody to remind me of how many expectations I bring in my daily life. Mm -hmm. And so you might be looking at this event going, I've got all these expectations about what it should be and how I'll change and whatever. And my thought would be, fuck your expectations, show up with an open heart. You know you're surrounded by epic humans. If you go look at the website, you'll see the lineup of experts and speakers and conversations and topics that we're gonna be digging into. All of our six pillars, parenting, marriage, right? Business evolution, emotional intelligence, vibrant health, wealth, all of it's going to be there. But you just need to step into the space and allow for something to emerge. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. That's the magic. That's where you will be pleasantly surprised always in your life if you do that. In fact, when you meet your family for dinner tonight, when you see your family, check your expectations Mm. How much you expect them to behave a certain way, expect. And, and you know what came up at the retreat for me, Ali, this time that I thought was so powerful was the discussion around how much we want to control, mm -hmm. how much we want to control. So even like when you're talking about asking those questions, right? I realized that sometimes I ask all these questions and I'm like playing the role of the great dad and husband. I'm like, well, that's what the framework says. I'm supposed to ask mm -hmm. this question. Mm -hmm. And in reality, deep in my heart, I'm asking this because I want to control the outcome. I want to control my kids. I want to control my wife. I want to control my time and understandably so. But dude, so much of like stepping into an environment like this is letting go of control. I'm going to let the agenda run itself. I'm going to let, I'm going to let fate decide who I meet. I'll end up sitting next to somebody that there's a great gift in that. And I don't know why, but destiny put us together in this way. Dude, that is it. I have to share a quick story. So at, uh, Last year, or no, earlier this year in Nashville, our previous retreat, I had this, uh, I can, I'm in a, a phase in, in the community where there's less people I don't know, like, so feeling very aligned with, with familiar faces and friends. And one of them was a buddy, Ryan Levesque, now is a buddy, right? And when it was time to do one of our final interviews, he came up to me and he's like, Hey, you want to do this? And I was like, huh, that's so interesting that you came over to me. Cause when I was scanning the room, I was like, that's someone I'd like to get to know better. That's someone I'd like to do a one-on-one -on -one interview with. And I knew very little about Ryan other than some, some very vague professional details. Right. So we had off on our, our one-on-one -on -one interview, take a nice walk and just enjoy getting to understand a little bit about each other's backgrounds. And then we sit down and we drop in. And after, like I said, this is probably my sixth retreat by this time. This was the deepest I've dropped in with a brand new dude yeah. who now is a good friend. And it's like, he basically asked a question that kind of supported my ask for that event. So the thing that I came in looking for some guidance for, but he asked it in a way where I feel only someone like Ryan, only someone new who I didn't really know could have sparked this thing that cracked me open, dude. And it was had to do with my relationship with my mom. And that cracked me open like, holy cow, you just blew my mind. Like, I broke down. I had to pause from speaking for almost 30 seconds. And I want to honor him for being able to hold that space because a lot of people want to go in and give you a hug and get, you know, get rid of your sadness. Ease the pain, ease the pain. But dude, going back to space, he had some, he had the ability to hold the space and help me feel some stuff that I needed to feel in that moment, had no idea it was coming. So in every way, it completely fucked my expectations <laughs> and then intensified as we did another uh, breathing exercise, which is a different story. But dude, it, it's just a testament to what you said. No idea that that was even part of the ask I was coming into. No idea that I'd meet a new friend and form, you know, this beautiful relationship. And how did I get there? By stepping into the unknown, by doing something that wasn't quite certain. So I think it's such a valid point that embracing this is definitely a piece of us evolving and, and uncovering things that we likely need, but we just can't see yet. Yeah. Well, 
We didn't know exactly what we were going to talk about today, but I'd say this worked out pretty well. Yeah, we were. Hey, I, I'm experimenting with something, dude, that I want to I want to allow us to sort of um, wrap with this question. I did not prep you on this, so you're going to be shooting from the hip. Nope. But we'll call this for the moment three principles in three minutes. So you've now been in this community for a while. You've been a dad for a little while. You've learned a lot. You've experimented with a lot. Three principles for parenting that you feel are the most important. Three principles for parenting that you feel be the most important. Oof. What are they? Oh, man. Okay. Like how much time I gave you to think about this answer? <laughs> <laughs> Feel into the body, man. Yeah, Feel into the no, body. I love this. Okay. So the first thing. And we're going to get a little philosophical, but you're, you're asking a really great question. And I'm going to give you a very authentic response is that I believe everything we think is about us. So shed this whole notion of you're doing that for other people. You're doing that. You're doing it for you and own that. So for example, you're, you're gifting an experience to someone you want to feel generous. That's a great feeling to feel right. But really cultivating the awareness muscle to realize that your thoughts are about you. Second, as it relates to parenting, I firmly believe that giving our children as much choice as possible without them endangering themselves is healthy. And this is, you know, a whole topic around even at young ages, there's, and there's challenges here, right? Like, I'm not going to say this is easy, but I feel the, the society norm, the conditioning we've come to expect is that we have to hover and make all these decisions and do all these things as mentors and teachers. When in reality, I think life becomes really beautiful when you're living with your children and you're not just constantly trying to be uh, controlled. Going back to your words, we're not trying to control, but to let go of as much control and really support giving them choice. The final thing, and this is something that, that came up at the recent retreat, so it's, it's definitely ringing loudly for me again, is like, there's definitely the space you need as a father, as a human, which we've already discussed, but then there's the space that you need in your partnership, your marriage, um, whatever that looks like for you. Is it making sure that's whole? Because it's one thing if you're making decisions as a solo parent, but when you have two people, right, there's a certain alignment that I've found after years of doing this work, after years of being in the community that I didn't have before. And now Gabrielle and I have this really awesome alignment that when we're whole, it's just a rippling effect. Everyone else is just, you know, kind of able to be and show up more as their true self in terms of our kids, our family members, et cetera. But if there's some, some tension with us, then that's the starting point. Right. Mm -hmm. That's like what we said at the very first retreat ever in 2016, we were like, let's talk about being better dads. And then it quickly turned to marriage because having a great marriage or a great partnership, right? Good relationships, adult relationships in your life is one of the most important pieces of being a great parent and right. talk about modeling one of the most important aspects of life is like, here's how to be in a relationship with somebody, kids watching and witnessing how you love on somebody, how you fight with somebody and repair and mm. all of that. So I love that, man. Thank you, Ali. I appreciate you guys. A uh, couple quick thoughts in here as we wrap one, uh, go to frontrowdad.com slash live right now, wherever you are. If you're driving, pull the car over, go to the website, look at what's going on here, December 2nd through the 4th. And um, if you align with being a family man with a business, not a businessman with a family, be at this event. If you want to be your absolute best in your marriage as a dad, and you want to do that now, and you don't want to get to the end and have a lot of regrets, you know, looking back on your life that you just didn't know, you just didn't invest, then go sign up now. If you value working on your business, right, so that you can be more effective in your business, do you understand that concept? Then ask, why would it be any different for your family? Why do you think we need to read books and learn and be mentored in our businesses, but somehow in our families, we should just be born excellent 
in, in marriage and in, in parenting. And the truth is we're not, we need help. We need to surround ourselves with people that we want to lift us, to elevate us, to challenge us. So be at this event. Um, I'm so grateful for your influence, Ali, in this community. Um, I want to thank everybody out there who's listening to the Front Row Dads podcast. Thank you for sharing this with other people. We have uh, a mission here to become a community of 10,000 members operating in 100 different countries. And right now we have an incredible core and such a solid foundation. And we're growing naturally because people are inviting their friends into this community. And that is why we're growing. And so if you're listening to this show, consider this your invite. Consider that we are calling you into the brotherhood right now. You're not listening to this by accident. You're, you're getting this message. It's being brought to you, right? You chose to receive this. Mm. And so pay attention to that invite and step into it, your life will never be the same. Your family's life will never be the same. Your kids will get a better version of you as a dad. And so thank you, men, for, uh, for what you're doing to grow and to elevate yourself. We want to see you with us in Austin, December 2nd through the 4th, frontrowdads.com slash live. And guys, one other invite here is go check out Ali's podcast. Uh, Ali, can you give a quick plug for where they can find it? What do they search for? How do they connect with you? Because I think you've got a great show also. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate that. Before that, I also want to build upon your invite. If, yes. you, if you listen to this and you decided to, to commit and show up and join us, there's an open invitation to come say hello to me. Like, come say hello. I would love to meet new people. And if this spoke to you and that was part of your journey, I would strongly encourage you to come say hello. Because like I said, I'm going to be there and I would love to meet anyone that where this sparked something for them because this is exactly what sparked my journey. I heard John on the podcast and I was like, I have to go. I have. I need more of this, even if it involved facing some fear. Um, my podcast, it's actually quite simple. It started last year as a passion project called The Pursuit of Something. I just recorded an amazing episode with you, JV, which is exactly why I do the podcast is I get to have these cool conversations with people about what's in focus for them, um, which yields to what's important, you know, and, and just kind of what people are up to in their lives from a place of curiosity, from a place of pursuit. So thank you for being on the podcast and thank you for that plug. Um, it's always fun to kind of just jam with people and think about like what's going on with them. So I appreciate that. Well. Wow. Ali, I love you, buddy. Excited to hang. Excited to see you again. Excited to have you and your family come to Austin and spend some time with the Romans. Um, and to everybody out there listening, guys, be present with your families today. Be curious. Be open to learning something new. And there's no doubt that if you're a family man with a business, life's going to kick your ass from time to time. <laughs> so take a deep breath. Uh, try to find some humor in the situations that seem very, very serious in your life. And one foot in front of the other. We'll see you on the next show. And uh, thanks for being part of the Front Row Dads community. Cheers.